the big screen. Still love it. Still love it. Still love it. Start with the show over here. Couldn't have made it without our actors, so thank you for coming over there. Thank you, the protagonist is brilliant. Um, <laughs> as Sam being editor, I loved editing it, and I think when so I did three AM nights in Ben's flats. There I am editing his film, and we just talk. We fall asleep. He wake me up, and we carry on editing. And what, what, what I love is more the weird things I put in whilst I was tired three in the morning. So um, I went, you know what I want to put in the office bit? A goat screaming. I just thought that, just made it. Just thought, why not? There's yeah. some very funny sound cues that, you know, off that we never see yeah. uh, play out. And they're really, really, it's a good comic device that. You've done it really well, yeah. I mean, the sound in all these films is good. I don't there's a bunch of films. We did actually have to think long and hard. I curated this with Alex about which films to put in. You know, it wasn't easy. There are there are a lot of films behind these ones that we talked about at length and weren't sure which would go in. But all the films that you see had good sound, right? That is the number one thing. Also, it's, it's completely the makers of the other films aren't going to be doing the ones that didn't do such good sound. But anyway, um, okay, moving swiftly on. Uh, the Dane. Yeah, that's almost. Guten Dane, I'll at Mini Yeah, we're a, bit, we're a bit earlier than that. <laughs> it's Old Norse, mate, I'm speaking to you there. You won't get that greeting again at any other festival, I promise you. <laughs> um, unless you go back in time. So, um, and Chesh as well, of course. Um, this is really impressive. I had never seen this film before. So, um, it what was really. Think? Sorry? What did you think? I thought it was magnificent. I thought it was a brilliant film. I thought that it had the, the code that the old Norse code in it of the of the way of behaving between the two guys. They both embodied that. And production values, acting, the lot. I thought it was really super. I was really drawn into it and held until the end. I thought the ending was really good as well. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah, really good. It's really nice to see you go on after impressive second year films and make a, I would say an even more impressive film in your third year. So yeah, really well done. How do you feel about it? Yeah, good about it. Um, very proud of everyone. Um, yeah. I think all of our effort paid off. Um, and I think you can see that in the final product. So just happy, basically. Yeah. What have you done with it? Have you put it anywhere Festivals. else? Festivals? Yeah, How are you getting on at the moment? Yeah, good. Um, we won uh, Best Drama at the Cotswolds the Film Festival recently. Excellent. Which is always good. Um, we caught it in some others. Where else have we caught yeah, it? Yeah, we're just waiting to hear back from some. Yeah, I, can't remember yeah. I think the rest of the notification dates are. It's, kind of it's long to go in a festival. I mean, it's hard to get a longer film in a festival, but it is very impressive. It's very good. And it really, I mean, it does, just doesn't. What do you think, John? It doesn't look like a student film. No, it looks really good. It's really good. good. Yeah, I was really impressed with it. Impressive yeah. piece of work. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I was really. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'll take questions from the audience later on as well. So I'm just going to move on through the film. Just caller ID. There you are. I wanted to see this on the big screen with it because the actual like getting involved in the, you know, the the drama of him creeping around the house and the Manchester Masher in there. I thought it would happen. It did. It had got me again all over again. How did you got feel? You got me again. Yeah. How did you feel? So? Um, I like to see it on the big screen. It was like like super special to us because. Like, I mean, did you scare yourself? Oh yeah, I scared myself. <laughs> 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 on how it looked but yeah I, I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed working on this project especially because like even we had like so many restraints like the location we wanted to get we couldn't quite get it and then the actor we wanted didn't show up but we still managed to make it work and still pretty proud of it well done for getting it over the line in that sense I think the one thing that I do notice in it that I would like to change is the location I, yeah. I look at the location I go I can see that's a little flat with one little corridor mm. and it would have been if you've got a really creepy house it was the plan. Well, it was the plan. Yeah, no, well, no, well done for planning and well done for adapting and making a film. That's a filmmaker. A filmmaker is a problem solver. When things break down, when things don't work for you, you've got to put, you just got to push on and make something, do something. And you've you've done a really creditable job there um, with all those with all those problems. And that does. And I did that shot where he's looks like he's hiding under the bed, right? And then the guy. Pulls the bedding aside know, how, and scans. Did you guys it's like super, get that? Yeah. 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 And then it, and then it tilts and he's listening to a wall. I I, I just I mean, completely get. I remember me that. the day when I was editing that scene, yeah. and I got the rushes in from like the DLP, and so one thing I've learned from the film is read your script. 
constantly make sure you know the story because I actually didn't realize that happened in the film until we were looking through and then I had the DLP with me and she's just like so yeah we're gonna have the shot where it's on its side he looks like he's under the bed and then we're actually gonna cut and he's in the wardrobe the entire time and I remember putting that together and I was just like this bloody genius like, <laughs> like, I hope we can pull it off you know like, um, so like yeah, I remember getting. Is it taken from something else? Has it been done in something? I've never seen it. I would remember if I'd seen that. Cut. I mean, I personally, I haven't seen. I've it seen it where you, you know many times there's a, a person, and the the appearance of where they are isn't where they are. Like in um, Silence of the Lambs, when she's knocking on the other door and they're actually at the house. She's at the actual killer's house, and they're closing in on an empty house. That that switcheroo has been done many times, but I've never seen it done with somebody hiding where you believe them to be in the spot that's been. I mean, fun fact: so that 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 scene, like, it just came up on the fly because it wasn't originally supposed to be like. It was supposed I didn't to think be, it was in the script. We developed the yeah, script together, right? It was right? supposed yeah. to be under the bed, but if you saw the shot of under the bed, the bed was too cramped; it couldn't fit. So we had to think yeah. of another. <laughs> it was space. difficult getting the camera. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there was another cramped yeah. space. That's right. In the script, he was under. He was under the bed, and he yeah. got caught, pulled out, and killed from the bed. Happy accident. Very, very well adapted there into a classic, classic scene. Memories from the bomb. Are you in? Yeah, they're not here. They're not here. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that, really that, that, that is the <laughs> only film, apart from La Jette, that I've ever seen that's in photo roman style, stills and, and voice. I've never, I've never seen another one. There must be some others, but um, if you've never seen La Jette, it's a very odd film. It's on YouTube. It's thirty minutes long or so. Twelve monkeys is a very faithful adaptation of La Jetée, if you don't know that. Um, so if you've seen 12 Monkeys and love it, go and watch La, La Jetée, which is done in that style of stills. Uh, it's, it's exactly the same story. Well, that's a shame then, Ollie. I'd like to ask you more about that. Astray. Yay. Hello. Hello. Uh, how are you feeling about your film being on the big screen? Yeah, it's nice. Nice, nice. to see it up there. Um, brought back a lot of memories. Yeah, it did. It's been, yeah. it's been a few months since the film months. made it. It's been a lot. Very, very touching performances. Very, very nice drama acting. Um, we had um, John Chu, who's regular in our. He did. Give us a wave, John. Give us a wave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to. <laughs> We've uh, <laughs> milked John for all his Yeah, you milked John for all his worth. You can milk a cat. <laughs> um, so, um, this. He he's a regular in Salford Uni. Film. He's been in lots of films in Salford Uni, and, and you know been the mainstay for our department altogether. So um, you know, thank you, thank you, John, for all your generosity, giving all these wonderful parts. It's, it's great. I knew he hate that. I knew he hate that. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Then. Um, and where, oh, where did you find that girl? She's oh, so fantastic. fabulous. Pretty, uh, um, she's, she's, been in, she's been in Alone With Me. Are we looking round? Uh, she's, like, she's no, she's not here, but she's been in a couple uh, films. Of Arif, I think you've worked with her before, have you, Arif? Yeah, or? yeah, I've worked on other shorts. Yeah. Um, so you well, knew she, from other shorts? Well, you she applied the... to the film, and then, oh, right. and kind of, we that. were talking about with staff, and I think Arif and John were like, oh, I recognise Priya, and I've worked with her before, she's great. Uh, held auditions, and she was just... Yeah, she was unreal and she was standout performance. So, and all the part, even the even the mother, it's a small, tiny part, but she sort of looked magical and in that forest, it looked yeah. it looked like a dream. That's kind of the like, kind of look we were going for, kind of the. You put a bit of frost on it, or something. Promise. Like and a promise. Huh? Promise. 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 Right. Yeah. It looks. It, it just has a lovely magical feel that 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 scene, and that it was exactly what you wanted. And yeah, she we sort of somehow to, looked trying to create that divide like between vision. his kind of is very dramatic and it's very intense for him but for her she's kind of off this adventure kind of that whole yeah split kind of look kind of I felt I felt it come across quite well it was impressively done it was Thank really you. impressively done I mean the whole the whole ensemble of it was really really nicely done her, him running like looking for her and her running enchanted in the forest is really that really is really cross cut um banana bread in the fear of female desire Um, the last drop. All right. Um, Laura announced the completion of your film to me. She said, somebody has finally made a noir film that is fun and watchable and enjoyable and brilliant. 
Uh, we get a lot of noir films, we get a lot of pointlessly in black and white films, we get a lot of games and all this sort of stuff in, and cigarettes. But this one, it really, really paid off with that, with that reveal. How did you come up with it? Um, so over uh, over COVID, I um, I was doing like delivery driving for the um, so for the pub I worked at, they did a lot of takeaway food as well. Mm -hmm. And um, because I was one of the like, few staff members that had a car, they said to me, "Do you want a bit more money?" So I thought, fine. So I remember I was doing uh, deliveries one night, and the um, I had my music on shuffle, and the taxi driver theme song came on, and I just thought this is kind of a funny parallel. And then uh, funny, I did knock on the door of someone that I used to go to school with, and it was really funny. That I thought this is a weird thing. I've seen someone romanticize their life and their job to be this really sort of like hard-boiled noir type thing and then in reality they just deliver food so i thought i should make a film about that and then <laughs> <laughs> and are you fans of noir is that did it come from that as well is uh not even i, I am no. quite a bit yeah, yeah. I, I in fact my, my um projects i'm doing next year is basically new noir as well but um okay. there's not gonna be a bigger plot twist in it um so sorry to disappoint but but yeah <laughs> more just in the neon more just yeah more like sticking to the driver or yeah. Great. Oh, it's really, yeah, really, really impressive, really nice. And um, six weeks in Cairo, sorry about the projection. Anybody in from six weeks? They're not, are they? No. No, okay. Um, that's a shame. Okay, so questions from the audience. Anything you want to know about films? Anything you want to ask the filmmakers? Yes. Hello. Um, it's, uh, I've forgotten what it's called already. It's for strange, is it? Um, yeah, strange. The little girl and stuff. Um, <laughs> what could a, a child's pencil against? It was on, on the two really. Um, I worked with a child before and we had an absolute nightmare because it was a four day shoot and then the, we got off to like a 40 degree temperature and oh, placed no. in. Oh, oh no. Did you have a, an understudy for her? Or we, did you? we didn't know. Um, she was really good to be fair. She yeah. was she was on it. Like the first day I remember it snowed yeah. in the forest. Oh, really? yeah. Um, yeah. April. Yeah, April, it was yeah. April, it was freezing, it was snowing. snowing. Yeah. But she was unreal. I think kind of the key to work with judge understanding when they need a break mm. and when they don't and kind of if you can judge that and navigate that okay then mm. she was she was quite good but yeah we, uh, we brought on maddie the second ad for literally just the That's time okay. and make sure because you know all the child license and stuff yeah. and you need all that so we brought on a, a dedicated person to to watch that and look after that so it was kind of off, yeah and how long was your shoot eight days was it in the end? seven and eight days seven yeah. days yeah. So there was yeah. there was no one that kind of matched her level yeah. so we didn't really have a backup which in hindsight might not have been the, yeah. the best idea <laughs> we're very lucky that we got yeah. through it but um no i think if we did have to go down that route it probably wouldn't have landed the same and, and been the same films because we did auditions and yeah. kind of there were kids who you could tell their parents wanted them to act, and then there was three who wanted to act. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can you can really see that difference in the way they understand it and, and yeah. perform it. But and who directed? Sorry, who I directed. Who directed? Yeah. Splendid job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Anybody? Yeah. Adam um, and the um, crew of Jane. How was it to kind of work with actors and you know make them deliver a language that's not native? Um, it was tricky. Um, I mean, that was kind of the, one of the main concerns I had even when I was writing. Um, and I kind of begun the process uh, by having it in my mind when I was writing a line of dialogue that this is going to have to be translated into a dead language and pronounced convincingly. Um, so I didn't go in with any kind of massively complicated dialogue, as you can probably tell, it's sort of one-line deliveries. Um, but yeah, it was actually really good because we had a, a linguist on board to do all the translations for us. Um, and uh, he also recorded himself. How um, did you find him? A YouTube channel. He, uh, he had a YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, which I was really I impressed you got him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah really I used impressive. to follow, I follow him, yeah. Oh, Simon Rockwell? <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, he's awesome, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. He told me, uh, that's my son, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that film. <laughs> um, I was, when he told me you've got Simon on board, I was like, bang it, isn't it? <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so. but yeah, I've been following him for a few years now, and I just emailed his business email on the off chance. Um, and he said, yeah. Um, but yeah, wow. he had a really good wow. sort of a uh, recorded pronunciation guide for the actors. And that, so he re he did the recording for the actors to then mimic. They yeah. they weren't they didn't have any Scandic languages no, themselves not at all. or anything. No. Nothing. Oh, I mean, uh, Luke Goddard, the, the guy who played the Dane, the big scary yeah. Viking man. Uh, he had done some kind of stuff on like Barbarians, like Netflix of Barbarians. Right. Um, and he'd done a bit of kind of stage acting, doing Norwegian accents and stuff. Because um, I didn't, I, can't, I wanted to avoid the sort of 
the caricatured Viking voice, you know, that you get in like yeah. Vikings yeah. in the Last Kingdom and stuff. Um, so. I think it came across all right, yeah. I like that. I like my set. I like that delivery because we get a lot of uh, sword and sandal stuff now in which people always deliver all of their lines, whether they're in English or another language like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just go, oh, really? Do we have to listen to an hour of this? Yeah. Really? And that was, they were, they had the real range and they, that, that was part of what carried us along in it, that it was really good dramatic performances with the range of human emotions, quiet scenes, big scenes. It was really good. It was kind of really supposed good. to just be a, a slice of life. Um, like, yeah. I kind of thought if you took away the, the historicity and you said it in the modern day, would it still be a good story? Um, mm -hmm. So the point isn't about it being set in the Anglo-Saxon era, it's just it just ha kind of happens to be, I suppose. Yeah. So I sort of said to them, imagine you're not speaking in a dead language. Um, imagine you're just having a conversation over the dinner table. Um, and I think that kind of helped. It, yeah, that's very good direction. Yeah, it worked. Obviously, it worked really well. With that. I meant I actually meant to say that in the opening and forgot my question. Well done. Well done. Next question. Jeremy, okay, we need to finish now. We need to finish. Yeah. Okay. I'm so proud of you guys, and I'm so thankful to John for putting this show on. Yeah. Round of applause for everybody.